Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Product Catalog Creator. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take data from a database, bring it into, dynamically create a product catalog based on a host of features, full customization, full filtering based on any type of situation, and a ton more. I can't wait, let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a massive training today. It's gonna to be really incredible. I'm gonna show you how to create this product catalog creator. And that means full customization, how we can set a specific number of columns. If, you know, if we wanna set a three column, we can do that. We can also set an amazing number of filters and we're gonna show you how to filter based on category. We're gonna show you this amazing selection drop down. We're gonna show you how to filter based on price and any type based on your data and then create a catalog based on that complete with pictures. We're gonna even set up the orientation whether it's portrait or landscape. So we've got a lot to cover. In fact, this video is going to be one of the best ones to create catalogs for any type of data you have, especially when you have attached pictures and those pictures can be located in any folder. I'm gonna walk you every step through it. If you do like these videos, all I ask you to do is just a few things. And if you could just like this video and of course, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click that notifications icon bell. We create these trainings each and every Tuesday for you. And all you need to do is click on subscribe and you'll get notified each and every week. This application is absolutely free. You can download it using the links in the description below. If you do like to support us, there's a great way. I have the 150 workbook pack. That is over 150 workbooks for just $56. That's 37 cents per workbook. It's a great deal and it helps us out. It keeps these trainings free. It gives you an amazing number of templates that you can use in any way, shape, or form that you'd like. All right, let's get started on this training. I'm gonna be using Office 365 for this. I found it a little bit. Usually I use 2010, but they'll work in either version. So don't worry, it's gonna work in either version, not to worry about it. And oftentimes I like to create these applications right in front of you as we speak, but this particular application has so many features. The only way I'm gonna get in all those features and teach you everything is to create it beforehand and then walk you through step by step. But not to worry, I'm gonna walk you step by step. Of course, if you do have any questions on an application like this, our amazing Excel for Freelancers Facebook group, it's got now over 32,000 members. I've got the link down below if you wanna join and ask any questions, I'm there. Tons of great developers are there to help you out. All right, let's get started. So what is the idea? Well, the idea is this. I've got a list of basically data in this list and I've got uh, lots of different data, just products. You could use any type of product. So we've got a you know code, the name, product, category, type, brand, origin, just some general data. I've got about 70 items here. And I've also got a picture. Now this is not a, a link to a picture. This is a file name. And now these particular file names are gonna go with these pictures. In fact, what I'll do for you is I'm gonna include a zip file for you. That means I'm gonna include all these pictures for you and the database. That way you can play with it yourself. You don't even have to bring in your own data. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be a zip file this week. It's gonna include the application and all these pictures in a separate folder. All you need to do is set the folder. I'm gonna walk you through that. So I've got all these pictures. Now notice these picture names are also the same as the same names located in this file here. So the picture names are all set up. They're PNG, but JPG will work. And I've got about uh, 68 items, okay? Different just types of items. You can use any items you want. That's it, that's all for the product list. I've also got here a type. I wanna know the type of, is it a text type, a list type, or is it a number type, or maybe even a picture type? That's gonna help us, because I wanna filter the data. I may not want to generate all of the uh, data. Maybe I only want to generate some of the products. Maybe and the best way to do that is to simply customize it. So we've added some customize. We can uh, display the fields, whichever fields we want to display. If we want to add additional, if we want to add a category, all I've got to do is add a category to our sample picture. Notice this sample. I'm going to hold down the shift and then just drag it down here. Now, if we create that, now we've got dairy. So if I generate that catalog, it's going to automatically generate that same catalog category, whatever category we are on. So now notice we've got multiple, I think we've got some different categories. This is all Gary, we've got category groceries and all the different categories. So whatever your template is, it's super easy to work with. And now maybe you wanna 
filter that. Maybe you only want groceries. So maybe we only want a certain type of, of category. So we can just simply unselect these. We're gonna show you how to do is an advanced filter. And now automatically when we generate that catalog, it's gonna only show those items with groceries. Notice we only have a few groceries. A great way, what if we want a four column, not a three column? All I need to do is set this to four generate the catalog and it's going to generate a four column fully customizable that's why there's so many features in this video we've got a lot to cover so i want to get right to it so the first thing what we want to do and this is basically we want to have a customized area using columns c through f that's our customization we also may want to change the orientation for landscape or portrait we can do that we also got to set the folder i just use a small cell for this and notice the product folder here this is the same product folder that i've had in my folder so all we need to do is just simply map that folder based on whatever's here and are very similar and i've got multiple photos with the picture and but that's all we have to do so all you want to do is take your folder put that folder here wherever it is and you're going to automatically have those pictures that way what they what the we're going to teach in VBA is basically this path here combined with this picture here, this file name, the combination of that is going to be the full file path to the picture. And that's going to allow Excel to display that picture. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got that. We've got the number of columns and we've got the portrait or that's the great way to display our product catalog. We've also got a customizable header where you can put anything you want in here, of course. And we've got our little sample here. So basically whatever this sample, however we change this sample, for example, if I want to left justify that, right? And uh, let's bring this down and I want to go into home and I want to left justify this and I want to right justify this one. I could do that and then we just need to bring the data here. So any changes you make so now now when we generate every change is going to be made based on the change you make so we've got a sample and then that's going to take that sample and it's going to show that so that's really great we also you know i already showed you how we can add additional fields here we also have fields i showed you how to do additional fields so we're going to walk through every step these are also different list type and these are all generated dynamically based on the data which is really cool so based on your data it's going to generate automate so maybe we only want a certain unit of measure or maybe we only want a certain price maybe we only want to show items that are above four dollars so all we have to do is just change this to four dollars and it's going to show only items above that amount so now when we generate that only items that are greater than four dollar are going to be displayed notice we have just a few items so it's a great way to not only generate a catalog but filter the data based on almost any type of field and then you can generate your dynamic catalog so it's really really amazing and the whole point is not just necessarily to create a really cool product but to show you some really cool techniques that you can use in excel to create your own applications so i like to wrap i like to teach these techniques to you but not just teach the techniques per se but create a product and show how those techniques can be used in excel and this can be used in any version of excel so we're going to get right to it first thing is well, we have this customization so when we click the custom button i want these columns to show up and i want certain things to happen so let's get into the vba and show you just how we do that into the developers visual basic we go also alt f11 will get you there and we've got just two different modules we've got here's what we got we've got some code that's on the sheet not too much we've got catalog macros this is going to build the catalog so we've got just this macro to build it and then i have a print catalog macro then i've got a few customizations so we've got open customization open that customization close and then refresh the list now what does refresh the list do refresh the list when i click reset it's going to basically run all the data over here take this data determine all the data and then refresh our list so basically all of these now are now refreshed and now we can go ahead and add it so that's a, it's a really nice way to do that so everything gets refreshed maybe you want to clear your filters and clear everything out so it clears all the filters refreshes it if you add data to it you might have new categories new types or new brands so we got a refresh list so reset's going to do just that for us okay so let's go into the code and just get start going on it so we can get right to it let's take a look in the catalog macros customize we'll start off on the customize first thing we want to do is uh, open the customization i want to clear any groups but not the sample. So the idea behind this is if I've got if I've generated a catalog, it creates a certain amount of groups. So we've got basically a group here. We're going to call this item group two, and this would be item group one. And then I've got a picture one and a picture. So basically when I go into the customize, I need to clear all this data out. I want to clear it out and allow us to customize it, customize our one sample. We have one single sample. 
And when I click that, I only want really this these sample fields to show up. We're going to call these. Each one is called sample data one, sample one, data two, sample sample one. I just use a sample, but basically we have data and labels. So for each sample we have, for example, if I click code, it's going to create two. It's going to create a label one and it's going to create a data one. So the data is connected. In this case, we're just going to use the first row of data just for the sample. And uh, but then of course with the sample, so then all I have to do is just bring it. And I may or may not want to show the name. We don't. Or we can maybe want to change the name. We can also just change it. Right. This is going to change it. So we if we just wanted to put in code code number right instead of code, we could do that too. So the label is going to stay consistent. The data will change. Right. So. So the, now if I do that and I generate that, it's going to show code number for every single one of those. So let's click on generator catalog and then we're going to see. So now it says code number. It's not really lined up, but you get the point. It's really cool because it's going to follow that format for every single product. Really, really easy. So get back into the customize. And then, of course, if you don't want to see it, you just got to just click delete and it'll it'll be hidden. Or, of course, if you don't like that, you could just unclick this and it's going to be removed. That'll work just fine, too. Notice we reset those, that's why they're not selected, but we're gonna show you, I'm gonna build this for you all throughout. So let's go back into the customization and walk through this macro a little bit more so you get an idea of exactly what we're gonna. So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna run a shape. So we're gonna dimension the item shape as a shape. We need to work through a lot of the shapes in these, so we need to run through some loops and focus on these shapes. So the first thing, the important thing is when you're creating applications like this, you want to be consistent with the names, right? So I want to make sure that my sample is named very different. Notice that my product groups are all called item group and then two or picture two. And yet my sample is very different. I want to make sure that my sample naming is very different. My samples, they all have the word sample in it. Notice they all have the word sample. So that's how I can differentiate between them. So that way when I delete certain shapes, I, I use the shape name to distinguish between different shapes. So that means any shape name, we're gonna use in string for this. In string means does this, the item shape name contain the string picture? Does it contain it? If it does, it's not gonna be empty. If it does, then what do I wanna do? I wanna delete that shape. I just wanna delete the group. I wanna delete any group that contains picture. But please note that the one picture that we have, which is our sample here, that's called sample pick. Notice it doesn't have the full name picture, therefore it will not be deleted. N none of these, of course, also you, don't, you wanna make sure that none of your other buttons include the full word picture too, because you only wanna delete those. So you make sure when you're naming those, you differentiate between the names you want to and the names you don't. Okay, so back into the code. We're also going to delete any shape that contains the text item group. And we do that again using the in string command of the item shape name remember we're looping through every single shape in the entire sheet in this sheet with sheet one shape so we're gonna loop through every single one this does it as long as we have defined item shape as a shape it's gonna allow us to do this it knows item shape as a shape Therefore, when we use things like shape name, it's going to notice the name of that shape and shape delete, it knows to delete the shape. So basically, I'm deleting every single shape that contains the word picture. I'm deleting every single shape that contains the word item group. What that's going to do is clear out the catalog. And of course, we wrapped on air resume next just in case it's not found. We don't want it to present an error. But make sure when you use on air resume next, we want on air to go to zero so that it, we are back in sync and ready for any errors that might come up. Okay, so another one. Now what we want to do is I want to take this sample group and I want to move it. I want to set the placement to move. In this case, because I want it to move with the cells. And then just in case I want to ungroup it, this is probably not so important. We don't need that. It was, it was kind of helpful if we're going to keep it as a group, but I'm going to ungroup it so it's not so important. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to make that sample group visible and I want to ungroup it. And you'll notice that when we close it, I'm going to group it. So the idea is this. When we go into generate code, I want to group that shape. I want to group it all together. So it's now grouped and it's hidden. It's grouped and it's hidden. You can't see it. But when I go back into customize, I want it ungrouped so we can work with. So just understand that these sample shapes are all grouped together. It's going to help us. If we group everything together, we can create additional groups and then keep everything nice and tight together. So it's nice to have this group. But when you're customizing it, you don't want these shapes grouped. You want to be able to move them around and things like that. So first thing what I want to do is I want to ungroup that. So and I'll walk you through the grouping process, of course. But so we're going to ungroup that. So the thing is shapes, sample group, ungroup. 
And when we run the generate, we're going to actually make it create a group of those samples and we're going to call it sample group. Okay, if for some reason it doesn't exist or something that group doesn't exist, we do not want to route that in on our resume next and go to zero. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to reset it to free floating in this case. And, and that's really important because when I have these products, notice when I, when I expand or delete this, I want to make sure, notice that these are being rows that are hidden. I don't want these to move. I don't want these fields to move based on hiding and unhiding of rows. So the best way to do that is to make sure that these fields are free floating. And when we right click, we go into the size and properties here and we see that uh, we have now don't move or size with cells don't move or size with cells that's very important that's also known in VBS free floating it means it's gonna free float it's not gonna be sized and it's not gonna be moving with cells so that's a really important distinction inside the properties okay so now that we have those shapes because and the reason is obviously because when we expand or move this we can't have these things move. we need everything to stay consistently in the same location okay so for each shape now i want to do for each shape any shape we're using our in string command again any shape with the name sample is greater than zero and that basically means or otherwise does not equal empty is same thing we could use the same thing two different ways in that case i want to make sure it's free floating and I want to make sure it's visible. We're going to hide it. You know, we don't need we don't need to display it when it's headed. We need to hide it. So I want to make sure to show it. When we exit out of the customization, we can hide it after we generate the catalog. So it's going to be automatically hidden when we generate that catalog. But I want to display it again once we go back into the customization. In that case, I want it visible. I want all these fields visible. Any shape that contains the word sample. I want to make sure it's now visible because only our sample is going to show that. So we do that just inside the code. Okay, so we're going to show that now we're good. So we're going to loop through every shape in the sheet looking for sample, making sure it's free floating and making sure it's visible. That's all we have to do there. Then what I want to do is I just want to show some button sets. I want to make sure obviously this button set, the reset button, I want to display. I want to display something called the close customer button and I also want to hide one other button. I want to hide this one, the customize button that should be hidden right that's only when we're not in the customization mode so we can do that with just a few lines of code close custom button we're going to make sure that that visible equals ms true i want to be able to close the customization so the button group the shapes the group of shapes the icon and the shape it's going to be visible by making it msoc true i also want to uh, hide i want to also want to display the reset button we can do that here Again, also the open customization button, we don't need to display that, so that's gonna be false. And also, again, I want to unhide those columns, columns C through F, we're gonna make sure those hidden equals false, that means we want the display. So that's all we're gonna be doing when we open the customization, but what about when we close it? Well, that's pretty simple. Again, what I wanna do is I just wanna double check to make sure the shapes are free floating in case the users have changed them. For any reason we want to make sure because users are allowed to change them so we want to make sure to reset them just in case to free floating so that they don't move around we want to keep them in the same place that way everything lines up properly and we also want to shapes the sample group i want to in case that's displayed i want to hide that although it shouldn't be but just in case I want to make sure that's for the sample group just in case it got created in case they open and close it and i also want to make sure that the close again we're going to take those three buttons and just basically do the opposite the close button is going to be hidden the la label template is going to be hidden in this case i want the label template hidden and i want the reset button also hidden and of course the open button that's going to be here now what is the label template let me go over that because whenever that briefly the label template is basically a sample label so let's go into the shape so i can show you and if we scroll down here and we on our label template we can see that the label template is this right here this is basically a sample label that we're going to use reuse this sample so if, let's say you decided when i create these new ones it's going to use this label template as a sample so let's say i decided to make this red if i wanted to make this red and I could then all of our labels will be red. So now when I create a new code, it's going to be in red. So it's going to basically take this. And that way you can set your own exact format. And maybe you want it a little bit bigger. Maybe you want it a, a dark blue color or whatever. So it's going to take this. And as soon as we create another one, for example, origin, it's going to use that same exact format. So it's really, really helpful. And we can just hide that now. So let's return it back to the way it was. We'll go with the black and then a little bit down. Actually, I've got to make it all black. And then um, 
make it bring it down let's go back to i think 11 is a, is a good thing okay so but generally what we want to do is we don't want to display that it's there but we don't need to show it it's always there so we can just hide that so what i want to do inside the code is make sure that that's hidden once we close it we don't need it just in case it's generally never visible but we could also make it visible in fact i should probably make that visible inside just so we can play with that here inside so your users so we do want to make it visible here dot visible equals equals mso true. so that way it's visible when we're customizing and where it's hidden when we're closing i like that better okay so basically that's it and then of course the columns we're simply going to hide those columns what about the customized refresh now this one is going to run through our data so what do i want to do on this one basically what i want to do is i want to rebuild that column this column i want to rebuild completely and why is that because data can change so if the data changes let's go ahead and update that let's go back to our name i want to get that name in here and then we'll update that so again let's say i want to put the name all we need to do is increase this to make sure a com company's all of the data there and then we can delete we don't need the word name so delete it okay so now we've got it reset up there so basically what i want to do is i want to rebuild these columns i want to rebuild all the fields the categories whatever categories there are if our data changes if our categories change or increase or decrease i want this list to be dynamic whatever it's a brand type and i want to go through every single column in that table and then of course if there's a price column i want to be able to put in a price so let's go through that and see how we do that so basically the idea is we're going to loop through our first all the way to our last probably just through numbers through eight and i want to determine if it is a text then we're, if it's a list what are we going to do if it's a number what are we going to do so we're going to do different things and you can we're going to use select case to do just that based on the type of column it is so let's go through that data and see just how we build this list so what i'm going to do we have a few columns a and b that we're going to put some hidden information not too much and basically all i want to do is i want to we're going to be working with these icons here so the best way to do it is to know what the characters are how do we know what number these characters are well, when we insert and we insert uh, a, what's called a symbol we can find out what type of that in this case it's going to be a symbol but we want to know what is the number according to that so if i want to put in this check mark here or i want to put in something like this we can just look at this wingdings number 252 that's our character and the font that's covered it so basically every single character has a number if i want to know that number in vba we can use the character code 252 so i've done just that so i've placed an icon here that i found it and i placed the character code here that's going to help us in VBA because we need to know what is what. I also want to know the number of the columns here, and I want to know some information that's going to help us expand and hide that information and know what column it is. So I'm going to walk you step by step through that macro. So let's get into that right now. So the customizer fest. First, what I want to do is I want to get the last product row on G2. We need that last product row because if we're going to run through all the products, I need to know what the last row. So that line of code is going to do just that. Get us the last row probably grow in this case of course it's 68 but we want to know dynamically through vba and using end xl up is going to do just that sheet 2a is a required and i up that's the last row now with sheet one what i'm going to do is just to make it a little faster we're going to take application screen updating to false and calculation to manual be sure that anytime you use this you must reset it at the end we want to make sure the application screen updating goes back to true and the calculations go to automatic so that's very important you don't want to use this in, if you're having bugs in your code you only want to use this when everything's set up so the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to clear all of the contents of those columns all the way from column a8 through f i want to clear everything out here inside here because we're going to add brand new so the first thing starting at eight all the way through e we're just going to clear everything out delete everything all this because we're going to create it dynamically so we need to refresh that and make sure to re clear it out all right so another thing what i want to do is i want to reset the fonts because the fonts can change based on whatever's data notice the font here for example the, the font here is uh let's just go over i'm going to highlight let's go we see that that's wingdings but the font here is calibri the font here is calibri so the fonts can change based on what's going to be going in here so we want to reset all the fonts back and then of course when i change these shapes i'll then reset the font back to wingdings based on what's going to go in there through vba we can do that okay so that's what we want to reset the fonts and now what i want to do is i want to make sure that i unhide all the rows so starting because notice that some of them are hidden some of them are not based on the data right so when we go here we see some are hidden some are hidden some are not 
So when we when we collapse the data, it's going to be hidden. So we want to make sure that it's not hidden. So we want to unhide all the rows. Okay, so once it's all unhidden, again, I want to clear all the criteria. Now we're going to focus on some criteria. If we're going to run an advanced filter, I want to make sure to clear all of criteria because we're running an advanced filter. Let's go into the data and take a look at that and bring this up for now. And so we have our original data here, but then I want to set a few things. I want to set some unique lists. That's important. And I also want to set some criteria. Now, this criteria is just empty. Why is it empty? Because it's cleared out. Not only do I want to clear out the criteria, but I want to clear out the header names. The colors don't mean too much. So then what I want to do is once it's once I run the advanced filter, I want to get our results. This is what's going to make up our catalog. So the catalog is going to be based on all this data because this data is filtered, meaning that uh, we've run through, through uh, perhaps some type of advanced filter with some just unique record data. And then I want to create that catalog based on this filter data. Maybe you only want to show a single type, a single category, or so on and so forth, or based on a price filter. So then we want to only create that catalog based on this filter. But to do that, we need to set some dynamic criteria. And so I want to clear that information out, starting with AA and going all the way over, and probably want to clear that data too. So I want to make sure to clear that out. Okay, so we do that through VBA, and we do that right here, AA through AS. It's going to clear the criteria and results all the way over, starting in the AA4, going all the way down. Okay, so next up, what I want to do is I want to set the display details. I'm going to set our initial value in AA to 9. Why is that? Because we've got 9 additional. I want to set that. Why am I setting it tonight? I need to know when I, let's pull that here. I need to know when I expand this, I need to know how many rows to expand it. In this case, it's nine rows. If I put the nine here, I know when I click this to expand nine rows. So that's kind of nice. So if your data contains more columns or less columns, you want to display this. You could also use a count if to count the data. That's another way. So there's programmably ways to do that where we just set it VBA, but you can do that. So basically, this is the number of columns, number of columns. If you want something to show, I want to know which field and I want to know which ones to hide. That way, when I click this, I'm going to know exactly how many rows to unhide by putting this nine here. So that nine is going to let us know just that. Okay, next up, once we have the nine there, I also want to place in the character. What's character 117 and what is C8? Character 117 is this character right here. I want to place this icon and I want to place it right here. So I want to place it in C8, so that's going to do it. That's why I put this little table here, this legend, so you can easily see which characters are which, because we're going to be using these throughout this little build. Okay, so once we have that, we know that we'll know what character is going to go there. And then, of course, in D8, I want to put the words display fields, display fields. That's going to go to the next one. Then what I want to do is I want to display some unchecked fields, unchecked, because we're resetting it, so we're clearing everything out. Theoretically, I could delete the sample, but I just didn't want to do that for our purposes. In other words, theoretically, when we're clearing this out, this sample should also be cleared out too, and we should rebuild the sample. But I just didn't want to do that because it's a little bit extra work. But so theoretically, we could clear this out, delete it, and that would force the user to then, again, select brand new ones. But for our purposes on training, we'll keep the sample here because it's going to save a little bit of time. Okay, so back into the code. So we're going to uncheck those D9 all the way through D17, and that's going to put that character, all these characters right here, D9 all the way through D17 is going to put the character 168 right there. That's the unchecked box as we're resetting this. Once we have that unchecked box, then I want to do, then I want to set the fonts programmically in that. Remember, that font is not Arial. So now we're setting the font D9 through D17. We're going to set the font name to Wingdings. And now also what I want to do is I want to set the headers. Now I put the headers very easily in here. I've got a set of headers in column E. So basically now I need to put in the headers here. E9 through E17. And that's going to come. I just put them in right in here. So just taking the headers here. Just got them a list form here. For all the way from uh, L3 through L11. That's going to bring those inside there. And so we could do that right here. L3 or some sheet 2. Then all we want to do is take... 9 through 17, now I'm going to hide them, right? We want to, I want that list to be collapsed by default. And then the user, of course, through VBA can unhide it. So again, we want to make sure that, that I want to make sure these are hidden. So I want to give it that default look. Next up, we're ready to add in our filters. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to use select case for that. Now we're setting select filters. So the first thing we want to do is set D18 to filters. Now you can make this dynamically if you want as far as the row based on the number of header. You can do some more. And then what I want to do is I want to set the custom row to 19, right? We're going to, that row is going to increase. The custom row is going to increase starting at 19, right? Our header is going to go in there. Then we're going to build it dynamically. 
Then what I want to do is I want to start a loop from the product column, one to eight. Why am I using the product column? Well, I've got eight column, nine including the picture, but eight we're just going to focus on right now because eight's the data that we're going to be filtering. So I want to filter based on that one all the way through eight. In this case, that's going to give us eight columns. It's going to filter all those. And then what I want to determine what type of field, what type of field. So to do that, the best way to do that is to simply just add in that one through eight. And then what I want to do is determine the data type. The data type is going to be on sheet two, row two, and the product column, which is dynamic. So basically, I'm going to extract this type here, text, text, list, list, list. So we want to extract that, and then we want to make some changes based on that. So if it's a list type, I want it down here. If it was a text type, we can add in additional filters, additional filters. But for list type is the best way for this particular program is it's the easiest to show you this train is going to be long enough. So let's just take a look at that and how we would do that. If the type is text, what I want to do is set the header just to set the header and decode. That's all we need to do in this type if the case is text. What if it's list? If it is a list, then what I want to do is I want to create, I want to extra, delete the criteria. Why am I deleting criteria? Name criteria, because when I create an advanced filter, it automatically creates some named range. So we go into formulas and name manager here, we're going to see extracting criteria. Now these are important when we use advanced filters. We need to get a criteria, we need to get the extract, but especially when I'm creating an advanced filter where I only want unique records, and in this case I only want unique records. What do I mean by that? I only want the unique records here. I only want what unique type or what unique categories, and I want to put those unique names. In other words, they're not going to be any criteria. I only want the unique list. I want all the unique categories. So to do that, we need to make sure that the criteria is deleted. Make sure that's very important. And what would, so programmably, what I'm going to be doing is basically doing, going in this, deleting this criteria. This is created by VBA. This name range is created by VBA every time we run an advanced filter that includes criteria. So I want to make sure I would delete these through VBA. To do that, we do that with just these two lines of code here delete in the case they don't exist it could create an error so we want to make sure to wrap that in on error zoom next and on error go to zero so we're going to delete those because we're going to be creating unique lists so now we're ready to run our advanced filter without criteria notice the criteria would go in here why do i don't want any criteria because i only want the unique list i only want unique list so we're going to run our original data on sheet 2 a h a3 through h and the last advanced filter we're going to copy that data we're going to use no you no know, criteria in other criteria of course in other advanced filters we will be using criteria but in this one i simply want to get to the list and i want to copy it to sheet two three in the production column what does that mean this is dynamic column dynamic column the rows set up the columns dynamic why is that because i want to run a loop right i want to do it for every single list item based on this we're already inside a loop here notice that we're already on a loop here from product column so for every single column it's based on this product column product column plus 14. what does that mean well if we take a look at here in our unique list and let's assume that uh, our name here is equal to column 16 right so our if our name column is 16 here but our original data name column is on line two all I simply do is want to add 14. So that's going to create the category unique list here. It's going to create the type because we're adding one. All we need to do is add 14 to the original product column. That's going to get us our unique list right here for those that are unique lists. So we do that through this line of code here. So we run this and it's going to equal. This is where our results are going to go. Sheet 2 cells row 3 column product column plus 14 the dynamic that's going to get us our each individual list next up what i want to do is i want the last results row of that same column i want to get the last row of that column right here so in this case the last row is eight in this case the last row is 13. i want to know the total data so to get that we're going to use that line of code to get us the last row last row is equal sheet two cells nine we're going to use a very high row product column the same column that we're focused on plus 14 and excel up this is going to get this last row last row of unique data okay so we got the last row of unique data and of course if it's less than four then go to no result if there's less than four meaning there's no data then we're going to skip all of this and just go to no result actually we should probably go right here to what i want to do is in this case just 
skip no result that way it's going to go to the next select or next item and select and then next product column okay but if there is data what do i want to do i want to do a few things the first thing i want to do in column a of sheet one we're going to focus on column a i want to know the number of items how many items are there that's very important because i need to know the total number of items in this case the total number of items are five why is that important because when i go back here and i go into the categories I need to know that this is five. Notice I put the five here because I need to know how many rows to expand or collapse. In this case, it's five rows. So if we put that five here, I know when I click here, how many rows to expand or how many rows to collapse very easily. So that five is gonna go here. So that's exactly what we do. So basically to get that, all we need to do is determine the last row is eight, subtract three because our, we start in row three or we start in row four and then of course that's going to get us our number five so we do that just inside vba right here last results row in this case it was eight minus three is five we're going to take that five we're going to put it right here a and the customer row remember we're keeping track of this customer row as we move forward okay so next up b in the customer what do i want in b i want to put the product column i want to know what column this was focused on that's very important what column in this case we're column number two right or column number three right this is column number three. I want to put that column. When I run that filter, when I run that advanced filter, I need to know which column we're going to be filtering. So I'm going to take that column, in this case three, I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it right here. I want to put it right here. Three, that's the number because when I filter this, when I run that filter, I need to know what row we're filtering. That's what column we're filtering actually. So that's very important. Okay, so that's gonna go in column B. So what about A? What's gonna go in column A? Well, let's take a look inside the code. In A, I want the first row of our data, the first row, that's gonna help us when we expand and, and we're gonna to need to know that A is gonna be that first row. Notice in this case, that in this case type is 26 is our first row. In this case, it's 38. So basically that first row of filter is going to help us and I'll show you why a little bit later on. It's easier for me to explain it. Okay, so I want to keep track of that. So we're going to put the first row, in this case 20, put it right here in column A, and of course the column of our data here. And that's all going to be hidden. So we can keep track of exactly that. So that's going to go in A. So let's take a look in C. We're going to get to A's down here. I skipped a bit. So we covered B, covered the, uh, let's put it, the product column. And in C, in the custom row, in this case, I want to put in that triangle, right triangle. That's the unexpanded triangle. That way we can know the user knows to expand it. That's going to go right here. So that's the one I want, that triangle right here, 117. When they click on it, of course, it's going to convert to the downward facing triangle, 113. But I wanted to initially show up that right one. So we want to put that in column C. Next up in column D, I want to put the checked checkbox. Of course, that is character 252. So we're just going to go through that right now, 254 inside of course a we just covered we want to put that row we want to put that custom let's put in custom row and of course we want our checked box to go in column d d and of course i want to set the font to wingdings and in row d i know i'm moving fast but we got a lot to cover of course feel free to rewind this or pause the video or slow it down if you like it wingdings we're going to set the font because i need a font for this checkbox same cells we're just going to set the font next up what do i want to do in in column e column e i want to put the actual data i want to bring over all of these results so in this column all i'm simply doing is taking the results here that are showing up right here in our unique list right here and i'm just going to bring them over here bring them over and then bring them right over here and placing them right here that's all i'm doing in that case and i'm going to do that for every single list of course so that's all we do in e-column e just bring in the data so now we have it next up what i want to do is i want to hide those rows remember we made them all visible here we unhid all the rows here but i want to hide those specific rows which rows do i want to hide i want to hide just the rows with the data there and not the top row so how do we do that it's a custom custom row plus one and that means that I want to, I don't want to hide this row, row 19, but I want to hide the one plus one plus all of them. So I want to basically take 20 through 24 and hide those rows so that they have a nice neat list when they first enter the customer or they first reset. So we do just that with this. 
Okay, but what about, that's it. And then the last customer, then I wanna update the customer row to the customer row plus the last results row, minus two. And basically what that's gonna do is just gonna update the row to right here. So we need to set the next row. Now we're ready to go on the next row. Now it's 19. So we keep increasing that row all the way here as we go through. Okay, but what, so that's what we're gonna do if it's list, we're gonna create these lists, but what if it is a number filter? If it's number filter, I wanna do something different. I wanna do a few things. I wanna put in, of course, the column number in B. I wanna put this greater than or equals to, and I wanna put in the white space here, but we're gonna do that. That's already been done just through format, just through general formatting, but I wanna do a few things. So the first thing we wanna do is A is two, because why is it two? Because it's always going to be just two fields less greater than or equal to or less than or equal to in that so we want to know how many rows to expand or hide that too is going to help us it's always going to be two for any kind of a number type field so we have that there so b1 plus b of course is going to be the product column in that case it would be eight i showed you that i want to put in character 117 in column c that's the same right triangle in d what we're going to do is we're going to put in the information two i want to put in the name of the field and d i want to put in the name of the field so we're going to put in that name of the field we're going to put it in right here that name is going to come from right here so it's going to be row three right here and the price and this is the dynamic column that's where the price is coming so i want to put that name here we could also easily get it from the product column and row three there's a few different places we could get it from either way it will work just fine because it's located different so again we're going to put that in right here coming from row three in the product column. We could just as easily use product column. It would be the same thing. It's a little bit less. Same thing, product column is gonna be located there. All right, next up in D, I wanna put D in the custom row plus one and plus two. So again, we're putting different things in the value. In D, we're going to be putting in uh, the price here, and then I wanna put in less than or equals to, and then greater than, or, greater than or equals to, or less than or equal to. That's what I wanna put in there. So the user knows that they can use that. So I'm gonna put in the, that information on D. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that those are hidden. We only want to display those rows if the user selects on it. And then we're going to increase the customer row plus three. Why three? Because it's three rows that that, that type of shape uses, right? You use three different rows. So I want to set the next row to this one, 76, to move on for the data. So we got to set the next row. So that custom row increases incrementally that's all we have to do that is exactly what happens when we click reset and that's exactly so that macro is finished next up we're just going to loop through all the code it's going to set the screen updating to true that is it that's all we have to do for customized refresh so we've covered the uh, open we've covered the close and covered the refresh now all we need to do is cover the catalog macro this is very simple so and a few on screen so let's go to the on sheet just so we know because we've been over this before actually and now we understand why we put the icons there but how do we get this expand thing how do we get that and how do we get this thing to change the check mark when we do how do we do that so let's see and how do we get those labels to show up so let's go to some of the on-screen sheets so we're going to focus on the selection change these are the macros that are located on the calendar creator here so we're going to focus on this so the first thing is i want to know the last row is long and if the count large is greater than one then exit the sub that means if the user makes the selection to more than one cell there's nothing we can do okay first of all what i want to do is i want to expand or unhide rows on selection through c8 if on two conditions one if they've made a selection on C8 through C99 and the target value equals character 117. So again, if it were equal to this character here and they've made a selection on them, then what do I want to do? I want to expand and all I need to do is determine this number and then unhide that many number of rows. So it's really easy. Now that we have that five in there, we know exactly how many rows to unhide. So we can do that here. So if for some, both of these conditions are true, then we should expand it. The last row is going to be equal to eight and the target plus row. So whatever's in target row and column A plus the target row. What does that mean again? Now I wanna know the last row. What is the last row? In this case, the last row is 24. So we can determine that 19 is the current row plus five is gonna get us our last row. So now we know to unhide 20 through 24. So we do just that inside the code. Range, the target row plus one, in this case would be 20, and the last row, 24, entire row hidden equals false. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the target value to 113. I need to change that icon. That icon has to go from the right 
and to the downward pointing. And so we do that, we're gonna change it to 113. See how this little legend comes in handy? So we know to change it to 113. Okay, so once we have that, then all I wanna do is I just wanna select out of it. So I'm gonna select one column to the left. Target, offset, zero, no rows up or no rows down. One column to the left, minus one, select that. And what that's gonna do is gonna select outside of the cell. That gives the user the ability to simply select and unselect, select and unselect by selecting to the left. That is it, or that's it in this case, this is it, right? You can see that it goes to the left. All right, so that's how we expand, but how do we collapse? Well, again, basically it's almost as similar, but in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking for this. If it's this downward triangle, we're looking for a selection on C and 113. So if we find that, then we know how many rows to, camp, to hide in this case. So we're gonna use this at collapse or hide rows on selections. If not, if we're making, again, we're making a selection from C8 to C99, and the target row equals what character 130, 113, that means it is the downward angle. Then what I want to do is completely the opposite. Determine the last row just like we did. This time we're going to hide the rows, the same rows. We're going to reset the character back to that right facing triangle and then select out of it. That's it. That's all we have to do for unhide and hide. All right, next up, how do we actually get the items to select and unselect? Well, it's relatively simple. What I want to do is I basically, when I select an item, I want to display this icon. So we're going to basically toggle between characters 168 and 254, the checked and unchecked box. So how do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. We're just going to determine what we're looking at first, what's there. And then we're going to, if the user makes a selection to D8 through D99, then I want to do something. Well, what is it that we want to do? Well, first of all, if the target value is 168, and what is 168? Well, we see 168 is the unchecked box. So in that case, if we're going to use an unchecked box, then basically I want to check it. So in that case, what I want to do is I want to set it to the target to equal 254. Basically, if it's unchecked, I want to check it. Else, if the target value is 254, then I want to uncheck it. So that part is very, very simple. All we're going to be doing is alternating. And then I want to make sure that I select off that. I'm just going to select off something else. In this case, column B, I just want to select something else. That way, they can continue to select on and off. And notice, of course, we have the shape show up. That's going to be an additional code, which we're going to get into right now. On selection of the show or hide fields, on selection, if we're actually selecting those, and that's going to come cover from D9 through D17 on this selection, D9 through D17 on a selection of those, what do I want to happen? Well, if it's currently unchecked, I want that name or whatever it is they've selected. We'll do one at a time because they're going to overlap. I want both the field name and I want whatever the data is, at least in the first row. So I want that first row of data to show up. And that would be the first row of in this case or this case or this case. So I want that. I'm just going to use the first row as a sample in row four of sheet two. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And as soon as they unclick it, I want those to disappear or actually be deleted to get recreated and deleted. So let's take a look at that. So so if they're making a selection between D9 and D17, then I need to determine what are we going to do? Are we going to be deleting the current shapes or were you going to be adding the shapes? So that's going to be based on whatever's there. So if the current checkbox is unchecked, meaning one character 168, if it's current, then what I want to do is add the shapes. And in this case, since we've already made the updates, I need to know if the current character is 168, then we need to know to delete the shapes, right? That's the unchecked box. So uh, just in case they don't exist, we do need to wrap them on air resume next and on air go to zero. So this should be actually on air go to zero just in case. And then we can reset that just in case, although it works just fine. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to delete the name. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to give each one a sample label. I want to give each one a specific name based on the row. So if they select here, this is good. As you see this, the name that's assigned is one sample one, label one, sample one, label one. So I know that all I need to do is sample one label. This is going to be label and then whatever is in here, whatever is located in E9, that's going to be the text that's going to be associated with that along with the row. So how do we do that? Well, we can delete it. We know the name because it's going to be the data name. The label name is going to be sample one, label one. So we know that or sample one, in this case, label two. 
So we use that based on the row. So it's going to be the row, in this case 10, minus 8. So we're going to subtract 8. That way we can have them 1 to 1 through 9. That way it's a little bit easier. So how do we do that? Well, we do that with just a little bit of code right here. So all we need to do is determine shapes, sample 1 label. We know the label, the target row minus 8. If it's the first one, delete. So we're going to delete that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the data. The data itself, data is going to be called data, label is going to be called label. Target row, so that's going to delete both of those shapes on. So if they're currently selected, if the, and I select it, it's going to unselect it and delete those. That's how we do it. Let's put that name back there the way I like it, and we'll bring it up here and then just expand it here nice and centered. Okay, so but we don't need the name, we can delete that one automatically. All right, so now that we understand how we're going to show and hide those, what if it's a picture? If it's a picture, what I want to do is show it. In this case, it's a picture. Look at this. This is the picture. I may want to delete it. Let's delete our sample one. Let's delete this one here, and we'll do it one more time. We'll unclick it. Click it again. It's going to bring up our nice picture. So in this case, I want to just then size that picture, bring it up here in the right place. Now we're good to go. So basically, if it doesn't exist, I want to create a picture. I want to call it sample pick nine, because that's the low column that's located on, or the row. The row is 17 minus eight is nine. It's also the column, ninth column here, column I. That's what I want to focus on. So we're going to create that picture. So again, if it's existing, I want to hide it. Actually, it should hide it. If it doesn't exist, I want it to show it. So how do we do that? Let's go over and show how to do that. I'll make an update on that code. If it's there, check for picture. If the trigger value equals a picture, then we know it's a picture. We're going to dimension the file name as string. And I'll make an update to the code so that it deletes. When you unselect it, it should delete. I'll make an update to the code so the download will have an update on that code. should probably delete. But I mean, you can manually delete it, which is fine, but it should delete automatically. That's an easy code. All I need to do, but I'll add it in. This video is going to be long enough. Based on the current selection, if it's current, if it's currently 168, we're going to delete that picture. Okay, otherwise, we'll add it in here. Well, otherwise, we'll else after that. We're going to dimension the file name as string. And I want to pull the file name. It's going to be based on two cells of information. In this case, it's going to be this, the location of where all the pictures are, along with the actual name. In this case, we're going to go I4, which is going to be the first row. I want to combine these two to create an exact a clear file name. So we can do that just inside the code. The file name is going to be whatever's in F4 along with sheet two, row four, the target row minus eight. That's gonna give us the target row. Remember the target row is 17. I'm looking for nine, right? I want, I want column nine. So the best way to do that is the target row minus eight. We'll do that. That's gonna get us the column, which is nine. So I'm gonna pull this up. Now keep in mind one little thing. This here includes the backslash. So make sure your file includes the backslash. If not, you'll need to add it in programmatically. Either way, it's gotta have that backslash right there. So we we'll wanna put that in there. That's gonna get us the full file path. What I wanna do is I wanna check to make sure that that file path is accurate first. So let's get out of here. And so the best way to do that is to, if the directory of the file name VB equals empty, then just let the user know, please check the folder path and file name. If there's an issue with that file path, for example, when you get this file, you're gonna to need to add this in. It's gonna create an error if you don't have a good file path. So I'll give you the folder with the pictures, but you wanna place it in somewhere and then make sure that folder gets updated here. Make sure you put that update there, whatever your specific file path is. Okay, continue on with the code, assuming that an exit sub, right? There's nothing we can do if we don't have a picture, but assuming that the file path is accurate, we're gonna use pictures. We're focused on pictures. We're already on the sheet, so we can just use pictures, insert, file name, and then we're gonna set a name for it, sample pick, and the target row, minus eight. That's gonna give us a specific name, in this case, sample pick nine. And then the shape, sample pick, and the target row placement, I just wanna put it free floating, and that's gonna be, it won't move or size with the cells. That's what I want, I just want it free floating. That way it won't change no matter what. Okay, great, so we have that. Now we've got the picture placed, and of course, once we add, let's delete this and do it one more time. Once we add it, it's just gonna place it wherever, it's not gonna know where it wants, so all you need to do is manually size it accordingly and place it wherever you want. This is just for your sample. When we create the catalog, every single catalog is gonna be based on the size and the position of this picture. So this is our sample, our template product here is basically what it is. So once we have that, that's it. That's good for the picture. Now we need to add the data, add the data. Well, how are we gonna do that? 
the label template. So what do I mean by data? Well, if I put in uh, the price here, unit of measure, I need to add in, let's put in the origin. If I need to add in, I've already put in the label, but I need to add this origin here. I need to put in whatever it is, and this is based on our samples, based on this one, right? So it's based on this column here. I wanna put that in, and then I wanna give the user the ability to drag it down. So we need to put in that data, make sure that first row of data is, and I need to locate that. So how do we do that? Well. The Shabel label templates duplicate name. The first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this label right here. Duplicate this label, I wanna duplicate this one right here. So once it's duplicated, then I wanna update it accordingly. So first thing we're gonna do is take that label template, this one right here, and we're gonna duplicate it because that's the one we wanna match that style, we wanna match the font and everything like that. So I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna give it a name, sample one data in the target row. That's gonna get us a name. It's gonna duplicate it and then assign it the specific name all with one row once we have that sample text box labeled and named we can then assign it some data with sheep sample data and the target row the text frame too this is going to be the text within it. it's going to be basically and i want to format this just in case i want to format it based on whatever the target row is so that way not only is it going to, i want to format for example i want this one formatted so whatever the formats here are i want to extract that format not only do i want to place the data but i want to extract the format so whatever the format is located in h4 i want to take that format and format this that's way when i do a price it's automatically going to be formatted accordingly see how that price got automatically formatted formatted and now we just put it drag it down here and then we can get rid of this okay so now we have that all right so now we want to format so the best way to format this is use the format application worksheet function text will also do the trick but it doesn't work on every single computer based on the language so there's some language or regional packs that might not allow us to use the word text it might be some different name on the worksheet so format is also going to work great for us format again this time sheet to our first row of data which is row four target row minus eight that's going to get us the correct column this is our data and then i want to match the form format so how do i do that well i'm going to find out whatever format is in that cell and i'm going to use that specific format to format it so that's how we do it so now we've not only placed the data but we've used the text format all right next up i want to place it i want to give it a, the left of g3 and of the top of g3 you could probably put that down a little bit too we don't need that all the way at the top so plus 60 you can put that down too that way it's going to be placed so now when i add something in it's going to be placed down here i guess we should do the type two but either way it doesn't matter because you're going to be dragging and dropping it so both of them the same so that we have the data and the type is going to be placed down here or somewhere everywhere anywhere it's actually good so it's probably okay the way it is probably g3 but keep it there we'll keep it at, uh, there uh, the top will go to the left and the top doesn't have to be done. Then I want to, again, placement is free floating. I want that do not move or do not size with the cells. And then I want to make sure that that's visible. That's it. That's all we have to do for the data. The label, of course, is almost exactly the same thing, except the text that we're assigning the label, the text is going to be the label that's here. I want to assign this label. So when I select this, I want this to come from whatever's in E in the target row. That's all we have to do with that. So how do we do that? Well, that's very simple. We just basically determine what's an E in the target row. E in the target row, we're gonna place that label name. That's it, that's the label. Again, placing that again, the left top, we could add this. If we add both of them, plus 60, and then we could do plus 60 on that. And that's it, that's all we have to do. And again, also make this free floating. That's it, that's all we have to do on selection change. That's how we're gonna get our labels. Now let's go ahead and update this. I'm gonna bring this back to the way it was, which is a nice, so I'm gonna delete this. Let's uh, let's get rid of brand and type and origin. I want the unit of measure and I'll put it, so the unit of measure, I wanna put, instead of the unit of measure, I want to put a backslash. So you can actually customize that right $45 let's say this is and then I'm gonna bring this down and I want to bring this then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it right in here and then I'm gonna put the carton in this case this is the actual unit to measure I'm gonna left justify that I'm gonna right justify the price if it's not already it is already good then what I need to do is just shrink this down here I'm gonna get everything nice and organized I'm gonna use my selection tool here I'm gonna line everything up here line it up vertically Good, so we've got that, and now all we need to do is let's add a um, type here. We'll go ahead and add a type, take off the selection change, 
and we'll add a brand here. Let's go ahead and brand Aria. We'll just put the brand down here and I got to left right justify this in case and right justify. We don't need the word brand. That's good. That's a nice thing. So now we are ready. Now we've got everything ready and we just want to create our Mac. Let's go ahead and line this up. I'll add this one to it and then I'm going to bring it over so that it's centered like that. So now we've got a nice product information we've got the brand here and just bring this over a little bit turn off the selection tool now we're ready to now we've shown you everything except the macro to generate the catalog and print which is just a few lines of code the generate catalog is one that we're going to get into right now so let's take a look at that we've covered the uh, customizing we've covered the on sheet macros now let's cover the catalog mac and basically what the idea is in this case is what i want to do is i want to so basically when we click generate we need to use that template and create all of our products based on the selection based on the filter so let's go into the customize macro in the build catalog located in the catalog module we have a build catalog. first thing we're going to do is to mention the label text as a string the group string as a string group name picture path we need all those and the group shapes i need as a variant because we're going to be grouping the shapes we're going to be setting some criteria column going over the row number the last column the last data row last filter row because we're going to be running an advanced filter so we need to get all the results of our advanced filter the shape row and the shape row so again what i want to do is i want to first of all i want to make sure the close customization we've gone over this macro but i want to make sure that we're closing the customization we're no longer in the customer so just in case it is open i want to when we generate that i want to make sure that we're closing that as well so we're going to run that macro first that's going to close the customization we're going to send screen application screen updating to false but make sure before we end it we want to make sure to set it to true at the end okay so once we have it set to false then we can continue on it's going to make things a lot quicker we're going to set sheet two we're going to clear any criteria and results so sheet two aa3 to az and ba4 what is that going to do it's going to first of all i want to clear all of our criteria and results so inside our products sheet what i want to do is i want to clear all the criteria starting with aa43 all the way through and then basically because we have dynamic criteria all the way to az i guess az and down right it's going to clear it all down and i also want to say any results our results are going to go here so i want to clear out the results starting all the way here basically on ba4 all the way through bi and down so that line of code is going to do that it's going to clear all the results down down there now we're going to focus back on sheet one i want to clear any existing groups but not the sample what does that mean when i when i run this macro here the one that's the macro that's focused on i want to clear all of the existing groups so how do we do that when we clear the existing groups i want to make sure that any group with the name of item group or any picture with the name of picture gets cleared out so we can do that with just this line of code focusing on with each shape and shapes every single shape inside that specific sheet we're going if for example the name again we went over this was we did it before contains picture we want to delete it if the name contains item group we want to delete it that's going to delete any catalog of course it's going to leave our sample because our samples name differently next up what i want to do is i want to get the last column which is f5 our last column let's take a look at that when we go into customize we see that f5 is the column that sets users so if the user set a three column and then they generate the catalog we're going to set that catalog based on only three columns or if they change it to six columns we want to create a six column so i need to know the number of columns to do that it's a little bit bigger than our sheet but we can do that in fact we could just bring g over and it would accommodate that and set that up okay so now when we generate a column it's going to set those pictures so how do we do that we'll keep it at four it seems like the pretty pretty good type so how do we do that well the first thing i want to put that into a variable because i need to loop through those columns so i need to put f5 into a variable so we do just that the last filter row we're going to focus on that is b99 i need to know run through all the filters remember we need to know which ones to include or declude exclude so b is going to help us get the last row we unhide this b is going to tell us b is the last row in this case b is our last 24. so i need to go through all these determine which ones to exclude for example we're going to exclude type we're going to exclude category on these we don't want to display fields for example in this case we don't want to show any dairy products so we want to exclude that but i need to loop and i need to know what the last row in this case our last row this is 75 so we need to get the last row from b so actually 75 so how do we do that we can hide these again and uh, we can go out of customization clean things up a little bit so b is going to tell us our last row then what i want to do is our criteria column we're going to set the initial 
criteria column. Why is it 27? Because that's the column that I'm going to start our criteria on. Our criteria is dynamic, meaning we're going to create criteria based on what the user selected. So I need to start it somewhere. I'm going to start it on this one, column AA. That's 27. 26 is the last. In the alphabet, 27. So this is what we're going to call them. And I'm going to put what, for every criteria, I'm going to put the name here and I'm going to put the do not equal here. Again, if we have another category. So as we add categories, for example, as we unselect delicatessen and unselect fish and seafood i want those when we run it only when we run it do we want those categories automatically show up now we can see it's delicatessen so now we're the categories are not going to be included so when i create that advanced filter i'm not going to include any dairy any delicatessen or any fish and seafood so that our results will not contain any of that Okay, so those are dynamic criteria here. They're created basically through the macro. So that's what we're going to go over. So we need to set our starting column. In this case, it's 27. We're going to run through all of our filter rows starting in 20. Why are we starting in 20? If we go back to the creator, back into the customization, we see that our first filter row, possible filter row is here. This is the first one. These are for displaying fields. And our last, so we're going to go through this and the last one. I'm going to look for anything that's unchecked. If it's unchecked, I'm going to determine what column it is. I need to know what column and what the name is and we not to include it. So we do that just with this line of code here. Inside, if B, right, B in the filter row does not equal empty, we want to make sure that it's actually a column. And D equals character 168, then exclude it, right? If it equals that character, I keep hiding this column and I want to show you again. Okay. If it keep if it includes meaning it's excluded right like as it is in dairy if it, if it contains 168 and B contains a value those are the two things that I'm looking for if both of these things are true where it's that empty check mark and three in that case what I want to do is I want to put it right here and here and then I want to increment the column one increment so I want to keep going with this keep going so that's all we do inside this loop here so if both of these conditions are true what I want to do is sheet two row three the criteria column i'm going to place the header that header is going to come from sheet two three b in the filter row that puts our header we could easily use the e and the set criteria but what is the header i need to know the header that's located in b in the column remember we placed that header in b remember here in b i placed that header column i need to know what header column in this case that header column here is in three right what is that i need to get this in this case three what's in column three and row three header what's in column four and row three type because i need to put this and i need to place it right in here i need to put it right there put it there so that's just what we do in that first line of code b here is going to tell us the header row then also i want to set the criteria i need to add the does not equal and whatever is in e so i need to take whatever is in e column me here in the target row in the row actually not the target row the row for example dairy and before that i need to add does not equal so and that's going to does not equal i need to put that in row four now we have our criteria set the category does not equal the category does not equal category so now we've done it now we've added that so once we have that we just need to increment the column one right because we don't want to overlap we need to keep every time we add something we need to increment starting at 27 and working our way to the right we need to increase our column one once we have that we're getting ready to go what about if it's a number filter if it's a number filter it's going to be a little bit different in this case if b does not equal empty and e does not equal empty just have and d equals the greater than or equal to or it equals the less than or equal to in those cases what i want to do i want to make sure that we add in the number format for example if it's a number format it's slightly different let's go over that what kind of a number format would it be in this case let's say they want to create everything over greater than or equal to ten dollars if i have that and i generate then it's going to look a little bit different then in that case what i want to do is i want to add in the price is greater than or equal to ten that way when we run our advanced filter we're going to only include items that are larger than ten dollars so we have that here under price so we can do that so if b is this is would be for prices then in that case the user has now entered a value into there as you can see here in column let's go back into the customize you can see column e contains a value e contains a value that means the user has entered something there then what we want to do is we want to take that in and enter the greater than or equal to sign and we want to enter that so that's just how we do it inside the code sheet two sells 
the, for this is for the row equals again we're going to set the header just as we did in this case it's price price i want to set the price we're going to use column eight of our original data we're going to look for column eight what are we going to find we're going to find here the words price in column eight i'm going to take that and i'm going to place it right here in row three i'm going to place it right here now we have that now what we need to add is the greater than or equal to 10. so this is where we set the header b is our column number row three now i want to set the criteria this criteria again is going to equal in row four the header goes in row three the criteria goes in row four what is it we're going to equal d in the value plus e in the value all we're going to do is we're going to combine these two things we're going to combine this plus this d and e and i'm going to place d and e together and i'm going to place it right in here here it's going to go right in here in ad that sets our criteria for price so that's it that's all we have to do so we're going to run through those loops once we have all that we have our complete criteria set in this case our criteria would be aa3 all the way through ad4 now we're ready to run our advanced filter but let's group the first products first group our first product fields i want to group that remember i want to group them together so we can loop through that i think that's really important so basically inside the code i want to group all of these items anything that has the word sample in it i want to group them in once they are grouped we can easily work with them so i'm going to group them together that way i can loop inside the group so the first thing i want to do is group them so how do we do that well again i want just in case they're already grouped I want to set the group fields to the sample group and of course if this is an error if this is an error that means they're not grouped if it's an error that means they're not grouped we need to group them so we're going to set it if for some reason if not group fields is nothing that means it's not created yet then we need to upgrade it so first thing we want to do is we're going to work with every shape on the sheet and if that shape contains the word sample then i want to group it so we're going to create a string and to do that we're going to so if the group string equals empty that means it's the first item inside that string so the group string in that case would be equal to the name but what if it's not the first in that case what i would do is i want to combine whatever we have already along with the comma and along with the name so if it's empty we're simply going to add the name if it's not empty i'm going to take whatever we have already and add on to it one comma and the name of that item that's going to create us an entire string of all of the shapes inside that in a string so then what i want to do is i want to make that visible shape field visible i want to make each shape visible and then what i want to do is i want to place it free floating that's it so now we've created a string and we've created all those individual shape visible and we made all those individual shapes free floating but now i want to create a group so the first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the group shapes is going to equal group shape is our variant here that's really important group shape as a variant and now what we're going to do is we're going to create i'm going to split that based on the comma so we can do that with the following lines of code so we can do that with the following lines of code group shape splitting we're going to split that variant based on the delimiter which is a comma and that's going to let us create a group based on that so now shape one shapes range group shapes select i'm going to select all of those shapes once they're all selected i can just create a group selection group them group everything that's been selected and then give it a name that's our sample group now we have all those inside a sample group what does that look like let me stop the code and i'm going to run it right until that point and now what we see is we have one single group here now you see it's called sample group so that's all we have we've taken each shape inside and we've created a group based on that now we have the group okay so let's continue on so now that we have them grouped up we can filter the data now we have all our criteria remember we're, we're set up we're already good with our criteria we've got it here now all we need to do is create an advanced filter so i'm going to get the last row of the data i'm going to create an advanced filter based on this criteria and then i'm going to place those results right in here i'm going to place them all right here notice it's cleared out which is what i want once we finish the macro all the results are going to place here then i'm going to loop through all the results creating additional shapes based on our sample okay let's run the macro completely and get it out here okay so now we've got it run completely now we see our results in here and we see we've got now data in here and we've got the results so let's go through continue on with the code so filtering data so with sheet one what we're going to do is we're going to get the last row of the data 
So with sheet two, we're gonna get the last row of the data and if the last row is less than four, then exit the sub. We're gonna get the criteria, first of all, and we're, re we're ready to run. Now we've gotten our criteria, we're ready to run our advanced filter. So we've already got the criteria, run, run, advanced filter. Okay, so A3, our first row, including the headers, and I, all the way to the last column, last data row, advanced filter. Our criteria range is gonna be cells, in this case, three is our header row, all the way to 27, right? That's our first range, our first cell in the range, three and 27, what is that here? Three and 27, we know it's our first row and first column. What about the last? We're gonna use the last column, I need to know what the last column, we know it's gonna be the last row is four, but what is the last column? That's the dynamic one, and that's gonna be based on whatever is in the criteria column minus one. Remember, we're tracking down the criteria column here, we're keeping track of it, we're increasing it one by one, and we increased it one the last time, but it, we didn't use that last data, so we need to subtract one here, criteria column minus one. That's gonna be our entire entire criteria range. We're ready to set the results. We're gonna go into BA3 through BI3, and we unique equals true. That's gonna get our results, and we just need to check to make sure that there are results. The last row, BA column, the last row, we're gonna set in case there's no data, we just need to check if that last row is less than four, then there's no data. Once we know that there is data, and go to no data, that's gonna skip everything else. Once we know that there is data, we're ready to create our products and pictures. So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna set the, the shape row of equal to one in the shape column. I wanna set, we're gonna increase our rows. Here in our catalog, we've got a row one and we have our column, right? Column one, two, three, four, and our rows are gonna grow depending upon the number of data that we've chosen. So let's go ahead and add in some more information here so we can have more products. Close that, and now when we generate, we're gonna see we get some more products. So we've got four, so it's gonna go through. We need to loop through the columns, and we need to loop through the rows. So the first one's gonna be one, one, as we increase. If it gets to, if our column gets to five, we know we need to reset the column back to one, because we've got a maximum of four columns. So we're gonna do that. First thing we're gonna do is set them both to one. So we're doing that here. Now for the results row is gonna be equal to four to the last results row. We're gonna ready to start our loop. Why is that important? Well, because I need to get through all of our results. In this case, our results are gonna start at four and go all the way to 21. These are all the products that we wanna display inside our catalog, so that's the information we want. So we need to get the loop. So for each particular product, we're gonna go ahead and create it based on the sample data shape. So here we go. So our first product, what we're going to be doing on our first product, the shape one row equals one in the shape column. If it's our first product, I wanna set the original left position. We can probably change this to 40, it's a little bit. So basically I wanna set the initial position based on G3, the first position right here. It's a little bit far over to the left. We can move it a little bit over. So our first position is gonna be here. So when I create it, notice it's gonna move a little bit over more to the left and a little bit too far down. Let's not both of them. I want the top at 50 keep the left and put it about 30. So that way it's gonna get us, I'm gonna run that macro again. That way it's gonna get us our first. We're gonna base everything off that initial position here. So our top, I don't want the top. G3 is where we're gonna be basing it on G3 and then move it down and move it to the right. So we do that with this right here. Do that with left position based on G3, plus we're gonna increment 30 pixels to the right. And then we're gonna increment on the top 50 pixels down. That's gonna position our first one. This is only for the first product when shape rows one and column one. On the last column, but what if it's the last column? What if the shape column is greater than F5? What's F5? F5, of course, is, I should put that in a variable. We do have that last column, put that in a variable. Okay, so if, if it's our last column, then what I want to do is I want to make the sh reset the shape column to one. I just explained it. If it's if it's on five, if it's greater, if we're on column five, we know that that's greater than the four that we place in the customization. That's greater than this four. So in that case, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we go back down and go to the next row. So we need to reset the column back to one. So we can do that here. If the shape column is greater than the last column, then the shape column equals one. And the shape row again, we're going to go add. We're going to Add one to the shape row. So the shape row in this case is going to go from one to two. So that way we keep track of the rows and the columns. 
Once we have that, we're going to set the top position. The top position is going to be able to the top position of whatever the sample group is plus the height, the height of that sample group. Remember that we created that group. I want to know the height of that group. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little spacer in. So what that's going to do is our sample group, let's say this was our sample group, it's going to determine the height of this group. It's going to add some spaces between it. It's going to set the next one down here. Now we know to place the left one. So we have those 35 pixel spaces and we can place the next one. So it's going to space it out accordingly. Now we can move on. Okay, so the left position is going to equal to sheet. Now I also want to set the left position to 50. So again, I want to place the left position of whatever is G3. We're setting that left position here, 50 pixels to the, in fact, well, let's go back to 30. It should be the same, 30, right? If this, if initial 30, then we need to reset our initial to 30. That's why they look a little bit different, right? Notice how it's a little bit off when we generate that again. We want to set them both to 30. Okay, so we want that first position left to be exactly the first of the first one. That's going to set them both to 30. So we've moved it down and we've set the position, the left position properly. We've reset the left position and we've reset the top position. We're going to set the group name. What is the group name? It's going to be the item group in the results row minus three, right? Our first results row is in row four. That way, our first result is going to be item group one, item group two, and so on. So that way we can group them. We want to set these groups. So this is going to be item group one. This is going to be item group two. Then we're going to set the picture one and the picture two. So we need to set that information. We can do that here. So this is going to put into a string variable. Now, what we're going to do is sheet one shape sample group. I'm going to duplicate. Remember that sample group that I showed you? We grouped it up here. We grouped it all the way up here. We created it and we grouped it up here called sample group. Now, what I want to do is I want to duplicate that sample group, completely duplicate it. And so once we have that duplicated, I want to assign it a name. I want to assign that duplicate a unique name. It's that group name here. In this case, group one, group two or something. So now we can work with it. Now with that group, we're going to place the left position at our left position. We're going to place the top position at our top position. We're going to make sure that it's free floating. Don't move or don't size the cells. And then we're going to set it to locked equals true just to make sure it's locked. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Lock may not be so important here. So in fact, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay, so then what we're going to do is free floating. All right, so now we are good to go. So now you see how we have it automatically updated and free floating. What about now all we need to do is group through. But now the data, notice the data is not up. We, all we've done is duplicate it, but it's still going to hold our sample data from the first row. I need to replace that sample data. Let's go ahead and I'm going to. So now we need to replace that sample data with the actual data. That sample data right now only contains the product in that first row. Remember, all we've done is duplicate it and it contains our first row. But I want to take all that data. The labels can stay the same, but the data should be replaced with whatever data is in our row here. We're looping through the row, so we need to replace that name, replace the category, or anything else that we have with the actual data located in the results. So we do that with these lines of code. If the string equals data, that means it, we're going to loop. The, so the first thing what I want to do is loop through all of the shapes inside that group, the group that we just created, the group name, I'm going to loop through all the shapes only inside that group. So how do I do that? For each item shape in sheet one shapes group name, group item. So for every single, we're going to check for data. If any of the shape names contain the word data, then we know it's a data, not a label. So for that, what we want to do is we want to set the information. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the result column. It's going to be the item shape name. What do I mean by that? I need to know what shape. Notice that in our sample data, we've got specific shape names and I need to extract that. How do I know which data? Is it data one? Remember in our customized, right? We've created specific names for that. Notice that this is data two. Notice that this is data five. This five tells me what column. This five tells me what column. That means column five, when we go back into columns, it's going to be this column right here, the origin or the unit of measure, column six or column two. So if I can extract that number, I know what column to set it off. And in fact, at this in this case, it's going to be original data, of course, it's column one. This is our original data, but all I need to do is determine the original data. So if it's column one, right, if it's column one data, all I need to do is determine equals, this is currently column. 53. So all I need to do is add 53 and get our results. So that's just what we're going to do inside our column. Add 52 to get 53. So we're going to 
all I need to do is extract that using that name. So for this specific shape that we're focused on data, for that specific shape, let's go back and I'll, I'll walk you through that. So for this specific shape, what I need to do is I need to extract the last character. The last character here. If you have more than one column, you'll need to extract potentially two and then base it on numerical. So it's going to be a little bit different, but for us, we have less than 10 columns. It's no problem. We just extract the last character. And then, oh, you could also put zero, five, and then remove the zero. In that case, if you have more than 10 columns, more than nine columns. So we're going to extract that. All I need is the number five. So we can do that using the write command. So write of the name, shape of the name, and I only want one character. What is that? We're going to take that and extract that number. We're going to add 52. That's going to tell us what the result column is. So that way, inside our project sheets, if this is column 53 and our shape is one, I know that this is our column. So this is column 53 to extract data. We already know the row because we're looping through the row. So all we need to know is the column. This is column 2, column 54, 55, 56, and so on. So we can do that. Now we've gotten the data. Now we know the result column. We know the result row. So all we need to do is the item shape, the text frame, the text, and the text of that item is going to equal the result row and the result column cells. And this is with sheet two. And so that means when we run, let's go ahead and run that one more time, generate that. Let's click generate that. And we click that. Now we see that we have sample data. The text of this is going to be based on whatever is in this information right here. So we're going to pull that information. We know the row. Now we know the column. We're going to extract that name and place it inside that text field. So that's just how we do that. And we do that for every single one. So now we've replaced it. And I just put this on this one. I put move because in case we add the difference, in case we expand the columns, it's a little bit easier. Okay. So that's it. That's all we do for the data. But what about the picture? The picture is slightly different. If we're going to check if the shape name equals sample picture, then what do I want to do? So we're looping through the sample. Remember, we're looking for something called sample picture. If it's found, then I know that I'm going to take again, we're going to extract that number. In this case, it was nine adding 52. Now we know where that picture is located. In this case, we're going to be pulling it up right here. So now we know it's nine. I'm pulling it nine plus 52 is going to get us 61 equals column. And you see that this is column 61. So now I know the column. I can pull this name and all I need to do is combine this name with whatever was located right here in our file. And of course, in that file, which we had, it's in the customization right here, located right here in the customization right here in F4. Combine that together. That's going to extract our picture. So. There we go. Let's run this again so we can see some information. So that's just the idea. So if we have a sample shape that equals sample picture, we're going to set the result column to here. The picture path is going to be equal to whatever's in F4 along with the result row, result column. This is going to get us our full picture path. We're just going to run a check to make sure that it is correct. As long as it's not empty, we have a proper file name. We're going to insert the picture. We're going to insert, we're going to give it a name, picture, the result row minus three. This is going to give us a unique name, picture one, picture two, picture three. Once we have that, we can then work with it. We're going to set the left based on the item shape left. So basically, I want to take that sample picture. This is our sample picture that we're working with. And I want to make our new picture exactly the same. I want to put it in the same position, the left, the same top, the same width, the same height, and the placement. So we can do all that. So all that information is based on our sample, setting it to the same left, setting it to the same top, setting it the same width, setting it to the same height. That's it. That's all we have to do. Then all I want to do is delete the item shape, right? Delete that sample picture. We no longer need that sample picture anymore. We've just created it. So that's it. That's how we create it. So that's how we move through all of the shapes inside a group, replacing everything. Then what we're going to do is we're going to increase. Now we've been through that. We've completed item. I want to increase the column plus one and I want to increase the left position. In other words, I want to move it more to the right, the left position based on our sample group. So what that's going to do is it can continue to add as we create one. Then we need to create a brand new left position, move it to the right, move it to the right, move it to the right until we get to the last column and then move it back to the original position. That's it. That's all we need to do pretty simple or maybe not so simple but it but it's when you look at it and you go line by line you can see it's understanding the only difficult position is sometimes with the placement of the pictures because we want that we don't want them to move sometimes we want them to move so the placement is relatively simple but movement can be a little bit complex but you can feel free to watch this video now all i really want to do is 
get the last product, I want to set the print area. Make sure when I want to print it, I want to set the print area. Now I know the last shape degree, so all I need to do is take that last shape, the group name, whatever the last group name was, and set the last row. I really need to extract the last row because I want to set the print area. In this case, I want to take this shape here, our last one, in this case it's item group 18, and I want to determine the last row, in this case 94, 95. So once we have that last row, we can set the print error. We know it's column G, but we need to get that last print. That way, when we print the catalog, automatically it's going to print it out just right. It's going to create that automatically. So how do we do that? So let's go ahead and show you just that. So we're going to set the print area. It's going to be the last product row is going to equal the sheet one shapes the group name this is the last one that we use it's automatically the bottom right row this is going to set the row then all i need to do is set the page setup print area g3 through g in the last product row that's going to automatically set the row i'm going to set the page zoom to zero and we're going to set the sample group visible we no longer we don't want to show the sample group we can hide that we'll select something else and then screen updating to true that's it Last thing is the print catalog. This macro has been assigned to that print button. All we're going to be doing, sheet 1, F16. I want to need to know if it's portrait or landscape. If F6 equals portrait, in that case, we're going to set the orientation to portrait. Otherwise, we're going to set the page orientation to landscape. The last thing is all we're going to do is print it out. We're going to set the print out. I want preview is true. In this case, we want to make sure that we are honoring our page setup, our which we've set right here is the print area. We need to set that up. False means we're going to make sure to show that and show based on print, based on the print area we set up. That's the print catalog. That's the macro that's going to be assigned to the print catalog. And that's why. So now when you click print catalog, it's going to print automatically. All right. I am so glad I got to show you this to you. I hope you enjoyed this training. If you do like it, don't forget about our mentorship program. In that program, I'm going to teach you how to create your own applications and sell them for passive income while I create this amazing accounting application that is absolutely complete. So you can check it out. MyExcelMentor.com is going to have all that information for you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.